a Tesla smashes into a police car while in autopilot mode. This is a problem that should have been fixed back in December when there was a massive recall. And I've also got some news on a recent study about automated vehicles driving. For the last few years, NIST has been doing an investigation into Teslas crashing into emergency response vehicles in autopilot mode. This led to right around a dozen crashes in nine different states. There's been 17 injured, and I believe two fatalities due to these types of crashes. If you're not familiar, Tesla's autopilot feature really isn't autopilot at all. It's more like an advanced cruise control. You still have to pay attention, keep your eyes on the road, touch the steering wheel. But there's people who have found ways around this, and there's people who don't necessarily pay attention while driving. And as first responders already know, there's a lot of distracted drivers out there. There's a lot of people scrolling on their phones while they're driving not really paying attention to what's going on. Back in December of 2023, there was actually a massive recall of almost all of Tesla's vehicles to fix this autopilot-related issue. It was a big software update, and I'm not going to go into all the details here, but it did add some accountability to the drivers using that feature, and it did add some features that would protect emergency responders when they're on the side of the road with their emergency lights active. And Tesla was doing a really good job. Their last crash was back in February of 2023, when and one of their vehicles smashed into the back of a ladder truck. Unfortunately, it was a fatality. The driver of that Tesla did not make it, but no first responders were injured. And that's a good thing because if first responders are blocking their scenes properly, placing their apparatus properly to protect the scene, to make sure that their crews stay safe, things typically go all right. I'd rather lose a two, three million dollar ladder truck or have one damaged than lose a firefighter on scene. After over a year of no incidents involving autopilot related crashes in first responders vehicles, there was a crash on June 14th, 2024 in Fullerton, California. Police officers had the roadway blocked off because they were already investigating a fatal accident involving a motorcycle. Police had to run out of the way to avoid being hit by this Tesla as it was driving down the road. The driver of that Tesla did admit to police that he was on his phone and the vehicle was in self-driving mode. Thankfully, nobody was injured in this incident. Self-driving cars are already here, and we're told they're the future. They're going to make things safer. There was a recent news article came out with the headline, Self-Driving Cars Found to be Safer. Except at dawn, dusk, or while turning. You know, all the things that cars have to do. Because cars don't just go in a straight line. And it's incredible that statistics are manipulated to show exactly what the writer wants to show. Because... Sure, I can see self-driving cars being safer as they're going straight down the road, staying in their lane, and following the flow of traffic. But once you add in the complexity of turning, low-light situations, especially dawn and dusk, but then you get in the situations like up here in Michigan in the middle of winter when it's snowing sideways, when you can't see the road in front of you, there's no way an automated vehicle is going to be able to drive down that type of road. Heavy rain, that's another great example. So there's still a lot of challenges that need to be solved when you're talking about self-driving vehicles. While I do agree that in a perfect world, automated driving, self-driving vehicles should be safer than humans driving because there's a lot of things that computers can do very well. But what they can't do very well is take input from an imperfect environment. And with all the other drivers on the road driving manually, we're far from perfect. There's a few interesting things from this study. While turning, the automated vehicles, the self-driving vehicles, are two times more likely to be in an accident. And at dawn and dusk, they're five and a quarter times more likely to be in an accident. What else is kind of interesting is these vehicles tend to be rear-ended more often. In fact, two times more often than a standard vehicle being driven by a human. And I don't know if that's the technology being a little weird because these vehicles tend to have phantom braking episodes every now and then. Or if it's the fact that as a human driving, if I'm paying attention, I can tell that somebody's going to rear-end me. And I'm able to make evasive maneuvers and get myself off the side of the road out of harm's way. As I said earlier, self-driving cars are here and they're here to stay. In fact, the industry has actually started with semi-trucks, primarily down in the Southwest because there's long stretches of highway and it's very easy to program a semi-truck to go from hub to hub over a long distance. 
There's a lot of advantages when you're talking about automating semi trucks that are driving down the road, but there's also some disadvantages too, because if there is a crash, it's probably going to be a significant, horrific crash. I expect to see a lot of development over the next few years in these automated self-driving features. You're going to see more and more outside of Tesla and even outside of Tesla. It's already here. For all of you that are first responders on the roadway, my second responders, tow truck operators, be safe on the roadways.